<laughs> yep, let's wrap it up on how to shop for gluconolactone. Okay. You know, this is surprisingly straightforward for having kind of a painful meat section on like, what does gluconolactone does for skin? Well, <laughs> we went on the secure this route. I actually think this is an arena that's relatively easy to shop for. Nice. Um, to start, we should definitely say that if you are already on other AHAs and you figured out like any of them, like uh, glycolic, lactic, or mendelic, we don't see really a need for you to go to a gluconolactone, especially if you're looking for, if you have stubborn pigmentation, if you have stubborn skin texture, this isn't going to be as hard hitting. It's kind of more, mm. it's even more of a sidekick than other exfoliants. It will help with those uh, symptoms, but in terms of like degree, the type of efficacy you can get out of it, it's just not quite on the same level. Mm. So it's really for those with sensitive skin and you really hate AJs, like, <laughs> they just don't react well to them at all. <laughs> yes, agreed. Um, yeah, and then in terms of concentration, mm -hmm. this range is pretty wide. Yeah. I think it's the widest of all the exfoliants here. So you're really going to be looking at anything between a 2% all mm -hmm. the way to a 30%. Mm -hmm. And I think the thing that to keep in mind here is, especially with AHAs, concentration mm -hmm. is so key yeah. that if you can't get a concentration, I just think, Gloria, and I just think it's not worth it. You yeah. know, like you need to know how much you're getting so you kind of have an understanding of the benefits that you might be getting at that level. And it's just a category that it just doesn't make sense not to have concentration. Yeah, exactly. And the good thing is this category is popular enough that there is a range for you guys to choose from. Uh, <laughs> Believe has a 2% gluconolactone peel pad. Mm -hmm. That one doesn't really happen many any other active ingredients per se gluconolactone mm. really is a star here nice. so this is for if you have very sensitive skin or your if your routine is really loaded with other actives and you're really scared of t tipping it over that irritation edge so this is a product for you gluconolactone is really popularly using toners so inky has a three percent uh k, k beauty likes using this at seven percent so innisfree has a seven percent dr mm. jar also has a seven percent mm. and these are pretty vanilla and can be a good daily upkeep for most skin types, most sensitive skin types. Uh, and then there are two products on the market that I can see that where you will consider using them as peels, where they combine with AHAs. Mm -hmm. So that is our very own Baby Steps, which combines 30% gluconolactone with 15% lactic acid. Um, we kind of position it as a two-way use product. You can use it as a uh, essentially a peel mask. Leave it on skin for 10 minutes on clean skin and then rinse off as a weekly exfoliation mask or you can dose it in your product as a, as a booster. We really, for those of you who want to just like dabble in different AHAs and whatnot, this is really a great booster because at 15% level, 15% uh, glycolic, 30% gluconolactone, it's really hard to overdo it regardless. Mm. So it's a great way to kind of play with dosing and see, uh, check out this combination. Ole mm. Henriksen also has a rinse off peel type product that combines 10% AHA with 15% gluconolactone. Mm. So that's another product you can try out too push the push the uh, gluconolactone efficacy levels yeah awesome so hopefully that gives you a good idea of the product landscape you might be wondering about sunscreen use despite the study we still recommend using sunscreen obviously you just it's a good habit to have regardless if you're using AHAs or not um so Gordon, I'm still going to recommend you to please use sunscreen while using your gluconolactone product. 